Hello everyone, my name is Prashant and this is a part 2 of the kernel debugging series. In the first part, we mainly speak about like the various kernel crashes, the hung, the hardware errors, the software error. In this part, we will look at one of the tool called KDUMP or a kernel dumping mechanism through which we can collect something called a VM code. So let's say in a case of a application, whenever your application crash, you have something called an application code. So same way, in case your kernel crash, we have something called a VM code or virtual memory code, which is just a dump of whatever be the uh, whatever be there in the memory at the time of a crash. We are going to dump it into some of the location, which may be your local disk or over the NFS or via SH. And then we can analyze it in the next part with the help of something called a tool called a crash, which is just a superset of your GDB. So some of you who have already worked on this dumping mechanism, you know, like before uh, rel 5 we have a uh, something called net dump or disk dump but there are a lot of issue with those uh, net dump or disk dump for example your driver need to support it will just support the handful of uh, the drivers as well as the disk dump which is like dumping to a some specific disk or the, uh, your driver need to be activated during the time of a crash so there are a lot of issue with those uh, with those tools so with starting from RELS 5, there comes a tool called a K-dump or a kernel dumping mechanism, which is much, much uh, like a stable as compared to those tools. So it is like the network dump or a net dump only support the network dumping and the disk dump support the local disk dumping. This support both the feature. And like I mentioned, we it's a level mechanism for dumping your VM core or a virtual memory core from your crashed Linux kernel. Okay, so we will see like how it will going to work out now, or it, how it is going to work. So uh, KDUMP use something called KEXE mechanism. So what KEXE do, it will allow KDUMP to reserve some portion of a memory, which are, we are going to see like how it going to reserve it very early during the boot process. So you specify some parameter called a crash kernel, which we are going to see like how we can specify it. Uh, in the grub.com and which will reserve some portion of your memory like by default it is like 128 and depending upon how much time you have present in your system it is go we need to tweak that parameter so whatever the memory we are going to reserve it we need to load a kdom kernel in that particular amount of memory or in the particular area of the memory so the advantage of uh, like reserving the memory very early during the boot stage process so that it will guarantee that that the memory which has been allocated is a contiguous memory for the KDUM kernel. Except for that, it will load the reserved area uh, for the new init RD image which has been built along with this KDUM and some additional heap for your secondary KDUM kernel. Okay, so use a secondary KDUM kernel which has been loaded into a memory when your kernel crash. And uh, the, the other advantage of this that your crash dump is created with this freshly booted KDUM kernel, not with the kernel which is crashed. So there is like, a, you can 100% show that whatever the dump you are getting is like a, uh, is a kind of a stable or not being touched by other part of a, that is crashed kernel. Okay. And the other advantage of using this KEXE mechanism that it will avoid going through you, uh, to the bio stage. So the crashed kernel memory is preserved. Uh, which is essentially which, which is which is required for your KDUM. So if it goes to the bio stage, your uh, uh, kernel crash dump will be lost at this stage. So so the, the advantage of using this KXE means not only only the KXE mechanism is been used for this crash or for this KDUM, but it will also be used widely by the developers to test some of the features in the kernel so that they can fastly boot the kernel with the help of this KXE mechanism so that they don't need to wait to finish the entire uh, bio stage and then your system will become up which is like a kind of a slow process so you can test your some of the new features with the help of this KXE mechanism so to sum up this all these things I can say that the, what KXE is it's a kind of a fast booting mechanism uh, that will allow a booting of a nice kernel from the context of an already already running kernel without even going through the bio stage. So that is the advantage of this KXC mechanism. And for to have to enable this KXC mechanism, we need to install a package called KXC hyphen tool, which we are going to see during the demo session, uh, how it will work and how this KDUM work. So this is how the yes, means event happen whenever your system crash. So uh, let's say like, let's take one of the case in which your system panic. Okay. 
so generally what you will see like whenever your system panic if it's kind of a crash like we are discussed earlier like in a case of a hung generally you don't see the oops message but in a case of crash generally a backtrace of those oops message is just uh, been printed in your screen so instead of like when you, whenever you have configured the kdump instead of printing those backtrace of message it checks whether the kdump is been configured in your system or not if kdump is not configured and your system crashes we are just specifically talking about the crash it holds the system and print the normal backtrace on your screen but if the kdump is configured then the portion of the memory which you have reserved is it unlock that particular portion of memory once the uh, it's done with the unlocking of the memory it hold the other cpu and this is particularly been the case in a case of a multi cpu system uh, so that it might be a possibility that the other cpu is actually trying to modify some portion of memory so um, the hold of a cpu is more at most necessary at this stage once the holding of cpu is done it jumps to the new kernel and after collecting the vm code it start booting again with the that and the again the with the same kernel so advantage to use this approach is to it boot to a normal kernel but don't need to go through your complete bios stage okay so this is how it works so generally the bottom line is whenever the kdump is not configured it generally uh, print the backtrace in your ilo or whatever the screen you have but in case if the kdump is configured it need to go to the all the stage it will boot it your system in the context of the kdump kernel and dump out the vm code to a location uh, which is been specified inside your configuration file which is by default is etc kdump.com okay so this is a sequence of event you need to perform when you configure the kdump okay so let's look at the demo part I already configured kdump on my system so first thing you need to do is install this package exe so like i mentioned earlier you it you need to have some mechanism called kexe which prevent going your system to your bios stage so with the help of this package that will enable that mechanism okay the second thing you need to do is to reserve some portion of a memory which we are discussing so far so this is a the rels uh, this is a centos 6.2 okay so in okay i think i already configured it but just for demo purpose i will show you so if you look at some of the parameter called crash kernel here you need to specify a parameter called crash kernel equal to 128 mb that is a portion of a memory you need to reserve for that kdump kernel Okay. Uh, in case of a rel 6.2 uh, you don't need to specify this parameter you need to specify something called auto so kernel automatically reserves an appropriate amount of memory for this kdump kernel okay one more thing i need to mention it over here is that this is some of the guidelines so if your ram size is greater than 0 gb and less than 2 gb the crash kernel parameter equal to 128 mb this is before 6.2 kernel or there is some i am i am not remembering the version of crash which is been updated with this version but not crash but kxc tools but before 6.2 i can say that this is how it will work if your uh, system has a 2 gb of greater than 2 gb of memory but less than 6 gb of memory the crash kernel kernel parameter equal to 256 gb Uh, if your system has greater than 6 GB of memory, less than 8 GB, find it well. And if the system has greater than 5 G, 8 GB of memory, then 768 MB. We will look at some of other stuff. And uh, one more thing I need to point it out, like I mentioned earlier, in case of rel 6.2, you need to mention something called auto, and uh, it will automatically reserve an appropriate amount of memory for this crash kernel. So the way it works, like. Uh, it will set up something called a base memory equal to 128 MB, which I already mentioned. Like this is the minimum amount of memory you need to set. Uh, in many of the paper, it is in mention like Anderson White paper that uh, you can test it with the uh, less amount of memory. For example, 64 MB of memory, you can set up up to 64 MB of memory, but that in that case, that is a kind of a unreliable. So 128 is something which which is a baseline which has been set. So the 128 memory is 
if you set up a parameter called crash kernel equal to 128 is equal to auto then the way it is been calculated is like the base memory is set to 128 MB and after each terabytes of memory the 64 MB so let's say the system has uh, something called uh, 1 terabyte of memory so 128 plus 62 64 so you need to set up this parameter uh, the the parameter which has been calculated is equal to uh, 192 similarly if you have 2 uh, terabytes of memory then 128 plus 64 plus 64 so 256 and once this parameter is being configured you can check it via proc cmd line so here you can see the amount of uh, the parameter you have already set okay once this parameter is set you need to reboot your system because this is the portion of memory which is reserved only for the KDEM kernel so if your system has say 2 GB of memory your system now has a 2 GB minus 128 MB because this has been specifically been reserved for this KDEM kernel okay so we have done the two steps first we install this KEXC tools package secondly we modify the boot kernel line and reserve some portion of a memory okay now let's look at the important configuration file rpm-qc and kc so this is the configuration file for this kdm okay i am not going to discuss more much of a parameter but there are two important parameters which we need to discuss the first parameter is called uh, the location where we need to sorry dump the vm core so like i mentioned the vm core is what but actually the content of a memory at the time of the crash so we need to dump those uh, that all uh, the core and which we uh, later on need to uh, later on we need it to for the uh, like debugging purposes so the first thing is like i already mentioned is something called uh, first we need to specify the location where we are going to dump our uh, vm core so you can dump it on your local disk so here you can even dump it on your raw partition so you just need to mention raw and the device location where you want to dump it okay the second one is like path you can specify the path the by default if you are not going to mention anything it is going to dump in your location something called where crash and then the something like a date variable it is going to dump in that location okay i'm going to show you like how it looks like so it look like like this crash something like this the ip along with the state variable okay okay you can even dump it uh, via the sh so you need to specify something like net means network and the user who has a permission to write uh, on that server as well as the location of that server okay and then after that you need to uh, run command called service kdump propagate to uh, set up a key between this server and between that other server so by default sh uses a mechanism called scp to copy the file from this location to other location so this has been uh, generally been helpful in a case where you don't have a enough disk space so for example if your system has a 2 gb of ram or uh, if you want to make sure like our k dump will be really successful or the dumping of the vm core will be really successful and reliable we must need to allocate at least a 2 gb of space okay and same way we can even dump it on the nfs partition so here you need to specify net the location and the exports which has been exported okay the other important thing you can do it is to uh, reduce the size of your vm core okay so for that we have something called parameter core core corrector and this make dump file is the mechanism okay so we need to reduce the size of the resultant crash dump file uh, this can be done by filtering the unnecessary pages and compressing the rest so uh, let's say we have a different different kind of pages in our memory for example the free page so for free page you have something called 16 a value for cache page you have something called 12 a value so you can specify it with the help of hyphen d and 31 is the highest value so you are just filtering out the unnecessary pages where hyphen d stand for dump level okay and then we have something called c uh, even after dumping means even during the uh, you can even compress those pages 
so you can specify a parameter called hyphen c to compress all those pages okay so there is a one catch that this make them file cannot work along with the sh scp or if you are going to specify the path local system uh, not with the path local system so you need to specify this for example ext4 dev sht like this or you need to sorry for example ext4 you have this partition or labeling like this there is some catch about this okay and once you specify these two parameter to make it work you just need to start this kdm service just start because i already started so i'm not going to start it again okay and make sure that it should on after reboot okay so it's running on the level 3 and 5 okay once you've done all these things uh, make sure you will test it because this is one of the most important thing don't assume it will work always make sure it will uh, always make sure you will test it so to test it you can run this command echo t echo c and our famous sysrq this will crash your system i already spoke about the sysrq in the previous videos so which is a kind of a system request key so let's say if your system are not responding to any of the keys or any of the signals then in this in the, that case sysrq is really helpful so print or alt control c or print alt alt control c these are the some of the sysrq which you are going to use uh, to create this pm code okay so i am not going to uh, run this command right now because this is going to take a lot of time and once this has been done like in this location you will see this file or directory and there you have a pm code okay so there are few of the question which has been asked by many people like how much will be with the size of a vm code so like i already mentioned with the help of this core collector and the make dump you can reduce the size of your vm code uh, by filtering out the unnecessary pages okay uh, and the most important thing about the size of a vm code it will depend like what exactly the kernel is doing at the time of a crash so if your kernel is not doing much of the stuff and your memory is free then the size of vm code is small okay uh, the other thing is like how much time it will take for uh, VM code to be dumped from my system to other system for example if you are using SH or using NFS so like I mentioned it all will depend upon what is exactly is the size of your like what exactly is the content of your RAM and what is the like a network speed it will depend upon a lot of factors okay and the most important thing to remember is please test it thoroughly don't assume it will work in some of the cases the uh, people will get like a partial vm code so in that case there must be a uh, two things first check your bios will not be resetted for example you have something called hp server we have something called automatic system recovery or asr which will uh, trigger a crash if your system has uh, goes down beyond a certain threshold or in a case of a cluster the fencing mechanism will trigger the reboot of the system so when you are uh, want to collect a VM core or when your VM core is getting saved if those mechanisms got triggered off you will not get a complete VM core or you got a partial VM core or a corrupted VM core so make sure like you configure your system properly if you want to collect the VM core so this is just a little bit introduction to KDUM how you can configure KDUM in the next series of this section we will see like uh, how once this VM core will be created how to analyze that VM core so thanks for watching this video. In case of any query or question, you can write it to me at laprashant.gmail.com. Thanks once again.